Very kindly, Professor Tanaka of Gifu University, Japan, arranged to make a disused laboratory available for setting up a pendulum. However, some work was required. It was necessary to be able to access the ceiling. So we called in the scaffolding people, and here they are assembling a scaffolding uh, arrangement so that uh, Rene can get up to the ceiling, which is eight metres above the floor. He attached the pendulum to a uh, concrete uh, hook, which was set in the ceiling here, and uh, uh, pretty soon you'll see Rene up on the ceiling there, fixing up his pendulum to the hook. Here, Rene is setting up the uh, apex of his pendulum fixed to the hook in the ceiling. Now let's see the final result of all these efforts. Okay, Rene is now going to release the uh, pendulum. Here's the pendulum waiting in its hole there, and there's a little piece of thread here attached to here, which Rene is now going to burn. Okay, have a go now, Rene. First, he removes the braking system for damping out the little wobbles of the pendulum on the string. Now he lights the match and he uh, sets fire to the thread like this. The pendulum is now moving. Okay, don't worry about that, that bit. Pendulum is now moving. He takes away the little bit of thread. Now we'll see how we measure the period of the pendulum. Okay, this is an interesting device we have made for measuring the period of the pendulum very exactly. It's a slider. It's a kind of bits of aluminium clamped together with nylon uh, um, lubrication. Now slide it in and out, Rene, so you can see how it works. Uh, I'll zoom in on the front of it. Now, there's a little wire on the front here, and slide it in and out. It slides out to touch a point on the bottom of the pendulum and slides in again, like that. Okay, this is the timer at zero at the moment. Now, Rene is now going to make a contact and time one swing, okay? Out there. Timer starts. Pass there. Out again. Timer stops. And now, here's the... There you are. 5.691 seconds. Here, Professor Verwalt is putting on his safety harness. We are now at the top of the pendulum, at the pendulum apex. Now I shall zoom in upon the uh, situation on the apex itself. Here you can see just underneath the light, there when I is showing you, this is the pendulum line, the wire that goes down to support the bob. Uh, as you can see the mirror is very close to the uh, uh, wire. There are two mirrors, one there, and show them the, show us the next mirror, and that mirror, two mirrors. Wait a minute, I'll try and get a bit closer like this. Now, two mirrors to reflect the light into the camera. This is the camera here. Show them the camera. That's the camera. And the two mirrors so as to uh, rectify the uh, image so it's the right way round. And there's a light. And the camera has got a long lens uh, set to 8 meters because the wire is 8 meters long. And so, uh, basically, this is capable of observing the movement of the bob with no parallax. Now we'll see what the pendulum looks like as viewed from the apex, in other words, from the point of view of the camera. The retro reflectors on the bob and the alidad reflect light straight back up the pendulum wire towards the camera and the light. You can see how this works here as we move the viewing camera closer to the wire. And here is the microcomputer with the uh, uh, pendulum image oscillating upon it. Uh, this will be stored and processed later. This looks beautiful and ghostly because the retro reflectors set in a ring around the alidad and uh, four retro reflectors set upon the pendulum are reflecting the light from the light directly back up into the camera which is set at the apex of the pendulum. It shows an interesting feature. The bob is released with half a twist set up in the um, pendulum wire. So the bob also, simultaneously with acting as a normal Foucault pendulum, is also rotating as a, like a uh, torsion pendulum with a period of about 120 seconds. Uh, these two, there will be a slight coupling between these two actions, but this may be of interest uh, in, during the subsequent analysis. We can certainly figure it out mathematically.